so much for all of your prayers for my journey um, and classes this past two weeks. And then, of course, vacation last week. I had such a wonderful time, and I appreciate all of your prayers. But it's always good to be back home. Yes. Amen. 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 So, thank you again. I appreciate it. So this morning we come to Ascension Sunday. How many of you have heard of Ascension Sunday before? Most folks have heard of Ascension Sunday, but, you know, Ascension Sunday doesn't get a lot of press like some of our other Sundays that we celebrate, does it? Yet we wouldn't have, what's next Sunday? Who knows? Who follows the church calendar? I call them my liturgical followers. Do I know what next Sunday is? It starts with a P. Pentecost! Here we go! Very good! Yes! So if we didn't have Ascension Sunday, we wouldn't have Pentecost or Easter without it. Jesus wasn't resurrected only to die again. Jesus was resurrected to be lifted into heaven and live forever, brothers and sisters, with God. So that we can know that there is life beyond this life. And Jesus also had to ascend so we could experience the Holy Spirit and get on with spreading His message throughout the whole entire world. You know, it is a kind of awkward, a little awkward time in the church here. Right now we're sitting between ascension, where Jesus, of course, was lifted up into the clouds out of sight. And, of course, next Sunday, Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit comes down from heaven to fill the disciples with power and energy and gifts for God's work in the world. Up, down, up, down. Ascension Sunday pivots us from Easter time into Pentecost. It moves us from the long narrative of Jesus' life that culminated with his death and resurrection and now lands us in this very moment that we have this morning. We, like the disciples, are left wondering, what now? What's next? Life in Jesus would be easier with his physical presence, wouldn't it? You know, I often wish I could hang out with Jesus just like his disciples did. Today we are reminded of our identity as God's own people, as Christ's body on earth. Acts tells us that we are to be his witnesses. We have seen the risen Lord. We have experienced the risen Lord. And we continue to make that experience known and not just to keep it inside of us. We who are bearers of the message that our brokenness, strive, and are missing the mark does not define us. That forgiveness, restoration, and redemption are possible. Yes. We bearers of the message have to hold true to the promise of long ago. The promise of a God who creates does not break, who sustains, does not harm, who reveals, does not hide. This God has come to us in Jesus. And as Jesus reminds the disciples of who they are and of their journey and next steps, Jesus begins doing what? Ascending. Clouds carry him into the right hand of God. And I am sure they were in awe of what they were experiencing at that moment. I'm sure that it was a beautiful, beautiful sight. A sight that I probably might be a little hypnotized by. Like a balloon that gets away, or a plane taking off as a loved one or a friend is being carried away into the clouds of the plane. Yes. We cannot do anything but stare and wait until the last possible glimpse yes. that that thing yes. is gone yes. out yes. of sight. This time, though, the disciples would not be left alone, would they? That should be a reminder that we are not left alone, yes. Yes. brothers and sisters. The Holy Spirit will come down, but now we just...
just need to hold tight yes. and wait. Yes. Something that we don't want to do in our lives is the waiting part. What do you wait on? You wait on to see maybe what that diagnosis is going to be for ourselves yes. or yes. a loved one. Yes. We wait on our food to be ready, don't we? Yes. We wait on our, maybe our spouses. Yes. Aren't you going to get up and do something this morning? <laughs> As we are waiting for Christ to return. Yes, yes, yes. You know, the disciples did not have that luxury. As Jesus was being lifted up, yes, yes. two men in what? White robes stood by them yes. like fellow onlookers, like Jesus on the Emmaus road, yes. asking, Why are you what? Looking up! What are you looking for? Don't you see that Jesus will be back? He promised that he would. Go and get on back to work. Don't be distracted. Move on and stop staring. There's nothing that you can see here. Jesus said he's going to come back. What do you want to Why? Go on and get back to work. Go on about your life. Now the Jesus who broke into history. Yes. We'll break into history again. How come Jesus is not revealed in our history books? So how? Why? Through the disciples, through us, as long as we don't waste our time looking at the heavens, Jesus will be back, brothers and sisters. While waiting for Jesus' return, the redeemed believers were told what their primary function would be. What was that? To what? To serve. Yeah. But what? Okay, to worship. And to do what? Spread the word. Yes. To where? Yes. All the nations. It was listed there in the Bible. Did you pay attention this morning when it was read? Yes. To the ends of the earth we are to spread the message of Jesus Christ. Now look up your Bibles again with me this morning. <laughs> Alright, Acts chapter 1. We're going to be in verse 8 right there. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you, oh, not just me, you as well, says what? Will be my witnesses. Brothers and sisters, there is written pretty clear right there. To be my witnesses, spread my word, my name to all the ends of the earth. Judea, Samaria, Jerusalem, right here in Ashboro. You know, it's so easy to become overwhelmed sometimes by events around our world. You know, such as the AIDS crisis in Africa. The outbreak of malaria in other countries. Yes, yes, yes. World hunger. Yes. Economic injustice. Yes. Exploitation. Homelessness. Human trafficking. You know, some of those things are happening right here in our town of Ashburn. But our limitations do not have to limit our faithfulness, do they? We can act in faithful ways in spite of our limitations. We may not be able to change the world single-handedly, but we can make a difference in the world one hand and one person at a time. Yes, yes. The direction of the apostles was of primary importance then, and it is as now as well. Start where you are at at this moment, now, in this place. As the Spirit works <clears throat> through their compassionate responses to the gospel to change the world, may that same Spirit empower us to go and do likewise in this world. There is no one but us, brothers and sisters. Amen. 
Not in this time and space. We can stand looking up into the heavens as many times as we want to. Or we can believe the promise of Jesus. That you will receive power through the Holy Spirit. It will come upon you. And you will be my witnesses. You will make footprints in and through ordinary. Imperfect communities of faith that seldom get it right. You know, Ascension Day is not a call to look up, I don't believe. I believe it is to trust that Christ's promise is down and in and around us and in front of us all around us. We are not alone. You and I who dance and climb, who run and get knocked down. We who lie on the grass or sit watching the late night news. We are not alone. Amen. The Holy Spirit promised by Jesus surprises us at every turn, saying, guess who? When we see other Christians gathering together supplies or health kits, when we see Christians sharing talents and resources to re rebuild devastated parts of the world. When we see Christians offering time and money to reach out to refugees and children around the world through community partnerships. When we see Christians seriously considering how their gifts can really make a difference. We see people willing not to only look upwards, but side to side well. Up, up, and away. Maybe that's not the best catching phrase for us as Christians. Sure, Jesus ascended into heaven and went up, up, and away. I'm sure the disciples were amazed at what happened and looked forward to joining him. But it all took place so that we could practice what Jesus taught here on earth. As the angels asked, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The mission field Jesus calls us is right down in front of us. <laughs> right here to our left and to our right. Amen. You know, as United Methodists, we claim the mission of what? Uh-oh. Come on, I hear it speaking out. Making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. All right? What about here in St. Luke? We understand that we are to what? Make disciples, follow Jesus, transform lives, and community. Amen. So, what does that mean? You gotta get some work. You gotta get some work. Is the work done, brothers and sisters? Yeah, yeah. Well, let's act a little bit more like it's not done. <laughs> Why do we do what we do here at St. Luke? Have you ever stopped to think about it for a moment? Why do we celebrate Mother's Day? Why do we celebrate Father's Day? Why do we have a Christmas Eve service? Why do we have Friday feeding? Why do we have the ministries of this church? Have you thought for a moment of what they're doing for the kingdom of God? Why do we do what we do here at this church? Do they follow along with our mission? Yes. To transform lives and community. Yes. And make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Whew, I don't know about you, but we got a lot of work today. We do. The work's not done yet. Jesus hadn't come back yet. Still much work to be done. So do we do the things that we do just to make a little check off <coughs> on our list of the things that we've done that week or that month for ourselves? So others can be like, I saw Paul in the Oh my gosh. Well, I saw, well, I saw Junior. Oh my goodness, he was there. Why do you come? Why? What impact? 
acts are you going to make for the kingdom of God and not for yourself? Amen. Sometimes I'm very guilty of it as well. I'm not perfect. You're not all perfect. Amen. Jesus Christ was perfect. Amen. And we're going to mess up. Yes, we will. And it's okay. Nobody in this place expects you to be perfect. But I believe that the potter is still molding and shaping us into what he wants us to be. So people of God, children of God, why are you looking up? Wake up! Jesus will be made known again through you and by your actions. Yes, one day he will come again. But until then, you are dead. Yes, yes. You will have an empowerment from on high if you truly believe that. You will have power and power and power from on high to do what it is that you are to do for the kingdom of God. The work of Jesus is not done yet. The work of Jesus, all of creation awaits expectation to hear the good news of forgiveness, restoration, new life, and the hope and love of Jesus Christ. The words of God, who in history and through a people, make salvation known. So how will you share that good news to the ends of the earth? To Judea, Samaria, Jerusalem, Ashburn, where it, ever it is that you live. So up, up and away. Are you ready to fly and to soar on wings like eagles to greater heights unknown with Jesus and for his kingdom? Up, up, and away. Yes. Ready to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.